Hello and welcome again to another video. In this part three, we are going to show you how to perform a race-free state assignment on your reduced flow table and generate an output map. These will be used to construct your circuit in a subsequent video. So here is our reduced flow table and we're trying to find a transition diagram that will allow us to perform such a race-free state assignment. So first we draw a rectangle and we put our four states A, B, C and D on the corners as shown on the right. Now notice that when we move from A, which we are giving the designation 0, 0, to B, which we are giving the designation 0, 1, and if we want to move to C, we have given the C the designation 1, 1, and the D the designation 1, 0. You may wonder why we have done it that way. Because it means that we can move around this rectangle move around the rectangle without breaking fundamental mode operation. You will remember that fundamental mode operation says that only one input can change at a time. So if we move from the A to B, we're only changing from 0, 0 to 0, 1. And if we move from the A to D, then we're only changing from 0, 0 to 1, 0. And similarly, going from the D to the C changes the other bit to a 1, or going from a D or C to the C, sorry, B or C, B to the C or D to the C, you're only changing a single 1. So look at it carefully and make sure you realize that as long as we go around the rectangle, we're not going to break fundamental mode operation. But if we go from a diagonal, suppose we were to go from the B to the D, then we are, are breaking fundamental mode because we're going from 0, 1 to 1, 0. Or if we were to go from the A to the C, or vice versa, then we would be breaking fundamental mode operation because we would be going from 0, 0 to 1, 1. We would be changing basically two bits at the same time. So what this tells us is that if we can put our flow table on this rectangle without having any diagonals, we have a race-free state assignment. If we end up with a rectangle with diagonals, one or both diagonals, then we cannot have a race-free state assignment. So let's proceed. Once we understand what this has, what meaning this has, let's proceed. So we look at row A. Row A. Okay, look at row A right there. So row A, to get out of row A, you can either go to B or D. So from row A, from row A, we draw lines to B and D with arrows showing that row A can either go to B or D. What about row B? When we look at row B, row B can only go to C. So we draw one line from B to C. When we look at the third row, we're now at C. We can either go to B or D. So we put the line to B, uh, sorry, the line is already there to B, so we just put an arrow on the other end of the line, showing that this is a bidirectional move. We can go from C to B, we can go from C to B, or we can go from C to D. Finally, we're on the last row D. We can only move out of row D and go to A, so all we have to do now is to put an arrow on the other line going from D, connecting D and A. So we've done that there, and we have finished. So we've been through our entire flow table, and we have not, we have not got any diagonals. So that means that our assignment of 0, 0 to A, 
zero one to B, one one to C, and one zero to D is race free. Okay, we have a race free state assignment for this flow table using those values that we have chosen. What's the next step? Well, once we have a race-free state assignment, we can now get our transition table from the flow table and also the output map. So we've drawn in anticipation, great anticipation, we have drawn two little squares, uh, basically two little uh, 16 square maps there so that we can find our transition table and our output map. Great. So we filled it in all at one go, but you can take a chance, you can take the time necessary to examine, examine the rows and see that wherever we've had an A, we have replaced it with zero, zero. Wherever we had a B in the flow table, we have replaced it with zero, one. Wherever we had a C in the flow table, we have replaced it with 1-1. One, one. And wherever we had a D, we have replaced it with 1-0. So it only remains now to fill out our output map. How are we going to do that? Well, we have to assign some states to those don't care conditions, those dashes that you see there in our unstable states of our flow table. These dashes have to be filled in, and that's called assigning outputs to unstable states. How do we go about doing this? Well, if we inspect the flow of our flow table, you will see with your own eyes that when we move from the A0 here in the arrow, in this direction we come to a B, which pushes us down to B1. So basically, our output changes from a 0 to a 1. Now, because our output is changing from a 0 to a 1, technically, we don't care what we put here. It could either be a 0 or a 1. It could be either a 0 or a 1. And the same does not apply here, because if we move from this stable A to this D here, we are dropping down to the bottom where we have a D zero. So we want to move from the A zero here to the D zero down here, which means that we need to keep this zero through the unstable state here. Otherwise, a, the output will quickly go to a 1 and then back to a 0, and that will constitute a glitch or a hazard. So whereas we could optionally put a 0 or a 1 here, we absolutely must put a 0 here in the column that I'm indicating. So let's begin. We put the 0, which has to be a 0. Now, if we have three zeros in one row, we're going to choose to put a zero in the last one because that will make, uh, make an, a, an easier reduction of our kernel map, our output kernel map when done. So we're going to put a zero there as well. But bear in mind that we could have put a zero or a one in the last square here depending on the circumstances. I just chose to put a zero because I wanted the whole top row to be zero. Because when you come down here now to the second row, notice that the only condition in the second row is when we're moving to the C and the C right underneath is a one. So we have no choice but to put a one. We have to put a one here. Because if we put a zero here, it's going to go from one to zero and then back to one, and that's going to constitute a glitch or a hazard in the operation. So we absolutely have to assign, assign a zero here to this C. So we do that now. 
sorry, a one because we're going, oh my goodness, you see, I'm getting mixed up. We're going from one to one, so we have to go with a one. So with the D now, what do we have to do with the D? Well, let's see what we have to do with the D. Here is the D. We're going from a 1 to a 0, so once again, we don't care. And over here, we're going from a 1 to a 1, so we do care. So over here, it has to be a 1, where my finger is, where I'm pointing with the pointer. It has to be a 1, but over here, a 0 would be okay because I'm actually going from a 1 to a 0. However, look at the table and you will see we have a row of zeros at the very top. Then we have a two rows that could be all 1s, which is very convenient for us. So we are going to choose to put a 1 here and a 1 here, which will make a total 8 squares of 1, which will give us a much easier reduction. So the last one that we have to look at down here is in the very bottom. And... Uh, we're going back to the A row, which is a zero. So basically, we, we, we have to have a zero here because we're coming from a zero and we're going to a zero. And we're, or we're coming from a zero here and going to a zero up top. So we absolutely must put a zero in the bottom row. So when we fill it out according to those instructions, we end up with a row of zeros in the top row, a row of ones in the next row, a row of ones in the next row, and a row of zeros in the bottom row. So that gives us our output map. And as you can see, that's equivalent to Y2 being always one. So our output Q of our flip-flop that we're designing is going to be simply the state of Y2. That's what, that's what this is saying. That's what this output map is saying, that our output of the flip-flop it's called an output map, is simply going to be whatever is the state of Y2. Once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.